Hey, good morning everyone. Kay here on the homestead in Tennessee. If you're new to my channel, I live on a little over nine acres in Tennessee, my home state. After living in the big cities for 40 years, we're gonna have a big storm today, they say, <laughs> and we're gonna go take a look around and make sure everything's secure. And I also wanna check on <laughs> my cistern. If you haven't been following uh, the story of my sister, and be sure and check out some of those videos right up there. <laughs> uh, but let's take a walk around. I've got so, I, my mind is blown. I just saw an interview, and I've got to go out. And, I haven't even finished it. I've got to go out and walk. So let's go. You can go with me. First thing we're going to do is just make a stop up at Tigers. Gravesite. Tiger was the sister of BJ, Spot, and Patch, and she got run over in November of last year. So uh, this was her gravesite, and this little stone I had on top of this stone, I brought this rabbit stone from. California and it's actually a cool thing that, to put in your garden it's got a hook on it so you could hang it on something but I just thought I can see this stone this was found when he excavated and it sort of looks like a sombrero from my kitchen window so I just wanted to set that back up okay I hope you saw my video yesterday. There's the side garden, and one quadrant of that is planted. So let's go down there and see if the leaves are still in place. Obviously, when they built the house here, they had to excavate the hill. So there's a steep drop right here, which lands here. A lot of water sits in here, and. I'm really looking forward to, to doing something about that one of these days. We actually put, my friend Corey put this uh, mound here to direct some of the water off the hillside over to the side, take some of the pressure off. We also put it, ooh, wow, see this was my fear, the leaves really got blown into the gullies and blown off the plants. So it's gonna be a rough, uh, there's no point in doing anything now. It's gonna be a rough go. So be sure and watch that video. Okay, here we are coming around. You haven't seen my azaleas. They were, these were planted long before I came. I tried to find this same azalea at nurseries and the leaves are so tiny couldn't find it. It's a coral pink that's just lovely. This is the largest one. The others, good morning. The other ones are smaller. Good morning. Uh, yeah, it's a dark morning. So let's go over to the cistern. Okay. I have a faulty light that, but you can see that the water is at least supposed to come up to the gray mark, and it's almost at the bottom. This thing is eight feet deep. This is a motion light that won't stay on. <laughs> so you get an idea. Okay, get back, get back. No, no, get back. If BJ fell in there, I would not be able to get her out. Hi. Are you helping? Are you helping? You're part of our video today. Hey, can you turn around and say hi to the, the folks back home? Look up here. No? Okay, well, you can talk. This is a new development. You've got to see this. I've got to walk down to the road, though, or close. I don't want her to go. I want to show you the horses. 
that have taken up residence across the road and I absolutely love it. It feels, you know, because I can already hear cows mooing from time to time. Oh, we'll catch that in a second. First, I want to show you this. Okay, so this is the river coming off of the cistern. So this is where all the water goes. So the question is, why is the water leaking out of the cistern and going down the hill and turning into a big swamp, mud, whatever you want to call it. Hey, help me out, okay? All right. So this spot isn't too muddy. I, uh, most of it goes that way. But um, <laughs> it's, it's this long four-year process to try to get this thing not to leak. And many people have recommended I abandon it and um, or put a liner in, which I haven't been able to find anybody to do that. Uh, it's claustrophobic in there. You have to find a certain kind of person that's willing to go down in there and work. You know what I mean? Now the wind is really picking up, so hope you can hear me okay. I am wearing my new microphone. Come, uh-uh, no. And so, uh, <laughs> it was holding, I'm still trying to process, you know, why is that empty? Uh, I haven't used any water. We didn't even turn the water on until recently. Uh, my new helper was helping me plant some peas over in the lower garden. And uh, I said, well, let's water them in. The soil was already wet. So I thought just a, a few two gallon buckets. And so he was walking back and forth to the, the PEX line. We put in a PEX line right under here, which is why I'm suspect. A PEX just doesn't leak and it's buried deeper than the freeze line so I know there's nothing wrong uh, with the line itself. <laughs> Golly, what is going on with you today? And it, uh, and he was sure he turned it off and we came back two days later and or whatever and he turned it on and there was not a drop coming out. Now I was there the first time we turned it on and some muddy water came out just for a second and then clean water you know a good hose pipe full of clean water came out and so I don't know I don't know what happened uh, but between then and uh, the next time two or three days later we turned it on there's not a drop so <laughs> all the water's here and I'm not sure why. So, uh, you know, I'm going to dig that down one time and just see if there's some problem down in there. And if there's not, I don't know what I'll do. But let's keep going. Oh, no. There they are. I want to show you the horses. I love it. They're obviously buddies and they hang together. And I just absolutely love it. I don't want to take care of a horse, but I love hearing them and seeing them. I certainly don't want to have to feed one, not with what's going on today. Take a quick look at my lower garden. Yeah, you stay up there. You stay, mm -mm, no, no, you stay right there. No. She goes, I'm going to be with you wherever you are. Now see, she went through that wire. It's. Uh, it's not on, obviously. Part of the wire is down right now because it all has to be tilled. And that's going to happen probably in a couple of weeks. I'd love to see this Phacelia, Phacelia bloom. This is the Phacelia. It's just starting to bloom. I showed you a couple of blooms in my last video. And uh, most of this right here where she is is clover. BJ, you like that clover? You like the clover? She goes, oh, I'm, I'm foraging. I'm in the forest. <laughs> well, it's all going to get mowed. You can see where we got more hay, uh, no, no growth. 
but a lot of work has to take place here between now and May 15th. That's probably when I'll start planting out things, although we're having a very hot spring, so. She's watching those horses and you saw her hunch down when that car came, so she's very smart about cars going down the road. BJ, BJ, be careful. No, no, we're not going that way. Let's go the other way. Okay, here's the out of the PEX line. The valve is shut off. So I just, I don't know what happened. All of these trees got manure and wood chips. The elderberries got the same treatment over there. You can barely see them. I'm gonna have to hobble back up the hill. Oh, but look at this red bud. This is the uh, stunner right now. It's, it's shaped like a fan. I don't know why, it just grew that way. But what a beautiful fan. <laughs> what a beautiful fan. Oh, can you imagine when that's like three times, four times the size? The grapevine leaves are budding out. If you recall, I had manure spread here and then a Daryl said, hey, you got to get that manure covered up with hay, otherwise it will, the sun will deplete its, its nutrient value. My neighbor Kip was kind enough to come over and help me haul that thing out. That weighs so much. Uh, and I thought, well, if I have six weeks there, I'll just plant the flower garden late. Last year, it was, it was stunning last year. It, I had so, I just spread seeds, African marigold and zinnias mostly. And it was just absolutely stunning. Let's go, let's go. Up the hill, come on. Up the hill, come on. Good girl, good girl. So there's the old hose down to the lower garden like I did last year. I was hoping not to have to do that. I need somebody with a, uh, let's see, what's it called? Track hoe, just that little tiny one like they put in fiber optic to run a line down there. But uh, that hasn't happened. Um, I guess I have to move some furniture around on my porch. You didn't get to see the, uh, the result of the, me dragging the, oh, this is the new, see the new azalea is almost the same color. I tried to get it almost the same color, but the leaves are three times the size, so it can't be the same variety, but it's almost the same color. I need to open my shades. Uh, here's the, uh, here's the lettuce cart. So the lettuce, you know, it's, it's doing okay. Hey, oh, you haven't seen this yet. This is a new addition. I forget the name of this. I've got the tag here. So you can see it. This uh, spot on the porch gets the least amount of sun on the whole porch. I just hope after the storm today, I should set it inside actually so it doesn't get beat to death. If you saw my last video, which I hope you did, or if not, you can stop right now and watch it up there. Uh, I was on my knees a lot. Historically, my right knee has been a problem, you know, when we would go skiing. Well, what happens in your knee, the reason it swells, is it's trying to protect your knee. That inflammation after too much activity is trying to protect the knee. This is what I've understood now for 25 years. <laughs> I did go skiing briefly in 22 with my son, but I had a hard fall in the third hour. And I, I, I think I crossed my tips and I, Walker had gone down the other way go, to go down the moguls. I said, no, no, I had already been down this little steep section three times. So I knew not to just fly over the hill and, and not be prepared. I mean, I hadn't skied since 17. <laughs> 
22, 17 to 22, five years. So uh, I felt pretty warmed up and I, I felt okay. And so I stopped at the top to uh, catch my breath so that I wouldn't go over the hill and not have the energy and the, and the you know, the, enough oxygen in my thighs to get, you know, to get through that hill. Cause there was a, two or three sharp turns in order to, you know, get through the steepness. The first turn, I guess I crossed my tips. I don't remember. I just, I just know that I went straight down on my face and it hit my mouth and I was absolutely stunned. When I, when I got up, all this was numb and I, and I, and I thought I've knocked my front teeth out. It's the end of my channel. It's, it's, that's it. <laughs> it's over. And so I, uh, I'm going like that, you know, and my teeth are still there. I can't believe it. They're just like, uh, uh, it hurts so bad. And then, you know, I, I got a whiplash just from falling hard and then the head going back, you know, how in like in a car whiplash, I spent the rest of the day between the clinic and the ER. And so I have, you know, debated if, if my skiing days are over. Well, so I did that planting day before yesterday. And now I worked on the video yesterday and it didn't feel too bad, but I was, and now this morning, it's like all, it's like all this inflammation around this. And so this, I'm gonna have to nurse it and I'm not gonna be able to be on my knees for a while. So there's so much to do. This is why, you know, Doug and Stacy created their food garden, all raised beds. I mean, that's one reason. The main reason probably, but it, ha it might've had something to do with soil. And so uh, that's certainly my case here. I got this whole hillside is rock. And all the dirt that was here has washed down there, which is why the lower garden is 200 feet from my house, okay? <laughs> which is why I bought a 20-year-old, now 23-year-old rancher, four-wheelers, to run up and down, you know, because you always forget something. I mean, you saw the, if you saw the video day before yesterday, I just came from the shop over to the side garden, and the wagon was full. And I still had to go back. I ran out of fertilizer and I, or bone meal and blood meal and had to go back and, and get a reboot on that. Hey, come here, come here. I don't think she's been into any poison ivy this morning. So she can sit with, with us for a minute. And, um, and then of course I'll go in and wash. But I just wanted to talk to you <laughs> briefly about this interview. Now, I grew up in a time where the nightly news was the thing the whole family did. You know, we watched the nightly news. My father, we had to go up and my father watched the 10 o'clock local news. That was 10 o'clock he would watch the local news. And, and he would read the paper carefully from, you know, beginning to end. And that was how we got our information. Well, it's very different now. And so because of my situation, I just, when I sold that house, that TV that was on the wall, which was already 11 years old, I mean, I didn't want it. And it's, it's this big, heavy thing. It was one of the first big flat screen TVs. I didn't want that big old thing. And certainly I didn't want to have to center a living room around that. And I know, I know that's, that's historically how we've done. We've just centered our gathering area around a television set. Well, once you get rid of that, you are no longer being shown what the powers that be want you to see. You can go and select, at least for now, on the internet, what you want to learn about. So I just saw this interview with Dr. Michael Nels, N-E-L-N-E-H-L-S, and he's written a book and some workbooks uh, called The Indoctrinated Brain. And I got halfway through this interview and I just had to go out for a walk. And I thought, I'll take you with me. <laughs> My mind is blown. I mean, as even as much as we've learned about everything that's gone on the last four years, this is new information. I have a mother with dementia. She doesn't have Alzheimer's. 
you know, every time I go, I just kind of get an idea of what she can still retain. And she has retained her kids' names. Some days she may remember her siblings' names. She'll remember her mother's name. Uh, but she doesn't remember where she grew up or where we lived or or where she dedicated so much of her volunteer time to our church. She doesn't remember any of that. I'll say, do you remember that favorite song you had that your father sang in the quartet? My grandfather was in a quartet and they sang um, hymns. They would have singings. And, th and these were her best memories. They grew up poor and it was hard and and her best memories are those nights when they went to the singings and her father and the quartet would sing and her mother would play the organ, my grandmother. And so there's a song um, and I, I'll say, you remember that song? And she goes, okay, no, I just can't remember. I said, well, I'll start and you join in. And so I'll say, life's evening sun and she always comes in on the next is sinking low a few more days and I must go and the second thing is to meet the deed that I have done where there will be no setting sun no setting sun <laughs> it's an alto um, alto it's a bass I guess it's a bass and a soprano or you know it's a bass and tenor you know you're supposed to go Life's evening, sun, uh, life's evening sun is sinking low a few more days and I must go to meet the deed that I have done where there will be no setting sun, no setting sun. <laughs> I was a horrible rendition, but that's okay. You get the idea. And, you know, these old country songs, it's just like, Think about it, life's evening sun is setting low. A few more days and I must go. And you're gonna meet the deed that, that you've done in your life where there will be no setting sun. So it's, it's like, <laughs> it's a lot packed into those two lines. Anyway, she remembered it. I said, can you remember Amazing Grace? And she goes, oh yeah. She goes, oh yeah. <laughs> and then, and then she, she remembers the tune. She doesn't remember all the words, but she'll start it off, and we'll sing it. And then she'll go, it wasn't too bad, you know. So she doesn't have Alzheimer's. And I know this is a roundabout way about talking about this book and this revolutionary uh, uh, concept that this. He's a doctor, and, and but he just did the research of published papers. This, these aren't his, you know, this isn't his wild notion. He just looked up published papers and put it together in a cohesive manner to understand how our brains have been indoctrinated. And that's all I'll say. So check it out. And you, you might find it very, very interesting. And it really reveals a lot about what's gone on. Well, it started long before the last four years, but that's when it accelerated. So, uh, and there's good news. He's talking about, I didn't even get into that part, but he's talking about some, uh, some things you can do to, uh, you know, when he starts talking about the various parts of the brain, the hippocampus and this thing and that thing and this thing and that thing, I can't. I can't go there, but uh, I can't remember all that. But do check it out if you're interested in learning. I mean, I'm still, the thing about, the thing about not having a TV is I get to seek out and learn about things that I don't understand or don't wanna know more about uh, as long as the internet's there and it's available to us. So anyway, I'm gonna give you a little, uh, just a little glimpse at what's going on in the raised bed garden and uh, and then we're going to wrap it up because the storm is coming. <laughs> I didn't get down here yesterday and look at this. This is ready to start sprouting out. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it and see if I can 
maybe eat that part. But you want to cut this when it's like about here because when they're this fat, you don't want them to turn into trees in your, in your perennial bed. This is only five inches, so I'm gonna leave that. This one has already sprouted out, but I'm gonna cut it. Because what happened last year is I missed a lot. It started going like crazy, and I missed a lot. And I had a huge forest of bushes here that was hard to maintain. So even if I don't eat it, I'm gonna cut it, but I will eat it. These leaves that were put on here, I was out of crushed leaves the day I wanted to do this. And so these are pretty much whole leaves and they'll probably all be gone by tonight. You want to just cut it down in the white part right below the uh, surface. Well, I can tell you what I'm having tonight. Now I'm probably gonna only eat, you know, that this is probably all gonna be too tough, but did you know that if you harvest your own asparagus, I mean, you really should harvest them when they're no more than this tall. But if you miss it, go ahead and take it out because I'm telling you, th these big ones, like that, that right there will turn into a huge bush. Uh, and if you're unfamiliar with asparagus, all these little things, that's where the seeds are. And you can get a better idea from this one, which just, I guess because of the heat, it just went ahead and separated. So all of these turn into uh, little ferns and flowers and seeds. And so you wanna cut it before then, but this down here is hard as a rock. And I learned this I learned this a long time ago, probably from Martha Stewart or something. <laughs> but you, you bend, this is the easy way to tell what to eat and what not to eat, is you just bend it to like gently like that till it pops. And then you just know that this is out to the compost and this is what you're going to eat. Uh, now that's the easy way. And then you can also gently peel two or three inches off the bottom and find restaurants. You will see that in fine restaurants. Um, because if you don't, you, you can miss out on uh, two more bites, two more wonderful bites of asparagus. Okay, now this asparagus is called Purple Passion, so it just looks fabulous in the garden. Uh, if you peel the purple off, obviously you're not getting any of those anthocyanins. And I don't know, but I'd like to think that some of those, you know, anytime you have a purple vegetable, there's more anthocyanins, which is uh, cancer fighting. And so, you know, like purple potatoes and, and purple carrots, they're more rare, but you can find them. And uh, blueberries and, and on all of that. I would like to think that the rest of it has more anthocyanin, even though the purple gets less and less as it gets bigger. Let's go ahead and snap these because they're too long. See how easy? Just barely. When it's fresh. If it's not fresh, it'll bend all the way over and you'll go, ooh, that's not fresh. I don't want to eat that. See, it hasn't been watered. If it had been watered, it wouldn't be that noodly. That's my term, noodly. You saw water come out, I smell smoke. Why would I smell smoke today? Somebody's burning right before a storm. My blackberry vines are leafing out. And of course the weeds are going crazy. Most of these weeds are herbs actually. This is what I was gonna say. I had a wild lettuce, one wild lettuce plant right there and it went to seed and now you can see I've got it all 
there's probably a hundred plants here. I could make so much tincture. <laughs> I could relieve the pain of a lot of people. Well, we'll see what happens here. I did not supervise the trimming of these vines because it was raining that day. Just an update on the raised beds, which you saw the whole filling and everything. So this has been planted. That is a little potato. There are three kinds of potatoes in here, three rows and three kinds. And obviously, this is, this is coming back from last year. It didn't get eliminated when we went through the soil and redid it. This is a new one. This is not a purple potato. This is a purple potato. So you can, you can see the difference in the plant when you're growing the purple potatoes. I've got a few more sprouts coming up. And these were plants. I decided to go ahead and get plants instead of bare root because it's so late. And I bought 36 strawberry plants. And so these two beds, literally with two helpers, we got this done in 30 minutes. Over here, you saw me plant this bed. And the turnips, actually, I'm going to have to thin them out. Those are the turnips. This, this is lettuce coming up. This is coming up from last year. I didn't realize it was a perennial, but it's swamp milkweed. I had a plant here and it got covered with aphids at the end of the season. And I thought, I'm not gonna grow that anymore. Uh, this is beets. These are radishes, except for this is mysterious. I don't know what that is. These are beets and the chard, and it just hasn't done that well. Even though we literally sifted this soil, look, it's just so compacted and it needs water, but it's, it's about to rain, so. These are all from last year. Aren't they gorgeous? This is gonna be a, well, I thought it was a cabbage, but it's looking a little funny in there. It may be going straight to bolting I think it is. I mean, I've got other cabbages in here under the netting. This is the voil netting that I was talking about in my last video. But all that broccoli has gone to flower, and I thought, ah, oh, it's so pretty, I'll just leave it. But it has to stay covered, otherwise the whole thing gets infested with worms and aphids. So, and the blueberries. This whole bed got weeded. Oh my gosh, the crabgrass, you have no idea. This got weeded, manured, garden soil, and fertilized and watered. And some of these bushes are loaded with blooms. And we'll see what's left after this storm. Fingers crossed. As you get closer to this maple tree, you see there's less and less blooms and the maple just tree just sucks every, everything up. I had a big ant hill here. That got the diesel fuel treatment. Well, since I am no closer to getting my dream greenhouse that I had envisioned in 21, I had envisioned that here because this gets perfect sun, the most sun close to the house where I could run electric and water since I'm no closer to getting that done than I was three years ago, I said, you know, and I just got this very inexpensive used set of furniture to sit out here, which I really enjoy. And I just decided to go ahead and plant this. Now it had, it was covered in variegated periwinkle in the fall. There's my neighbor. I had him mow everything Everything was mowed flat because it was so many weeds. The periwinkle came back strong. And so what I decided to do is clear this off. There were a bunch of little rocks, you know, real tripping hazard. That's one of the things when you're older is like get all of the things out of the way that ca might cause you to trip. Because I've done that. So we got all these rocks taken off of here and everywhere you see a stick, uh, something was planted there. Whether it comes up or not, I don't know, but at least I got these two beautiful lilac bushes, which are blooming, and 
I am just hoping that the storm doesn't knock off all the blooms. The two lilacs back of my bedroom, the little ones, had beautiful blooms. They're gone. They've gotten blown off or whatever. So I'm just hoping all of this looks nice after this storm. Hey, thanks so much for following my journey here on the homestead, trying to build a sustainable homestead on my own with a lot of help from uh, great people that I found. I'm very fortunate and great neighbors and who've really been helpful. So that's key. You know, if you're moving somewhere and you're alone, you need to find a community ASAP and and start building on that, getting your preps together, getting ready. We don't know what's gonna happen, so we need to be as prepared as we can. Check out that book and let me know what you think about it. I'm gonna go back in and finish the video and have another cup of tea <laughs> and try to get this video out today. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell for notifications. Uh, click all so you won't miss any of my uploads. I'm coming up on my 12th anniversary. I was one of the very first YouTubers doing uh, a garden channel on YouTube. And a lot of the very successful channels like the Gardening Channel with James Prigioni, Gardener Scott, and a bunch of others look to my channel when they were starting their channel. And I'm still here. <laughs> I'm not successful like them because I've made some transitions, you know, from from a small space urban garden to, uh, well, briefly to an apartment with containers and then here where it's a whole homestead. So it's been hard to bring that audience along and I hope you'll share my channel, share the journey, and I hope to inspire you in a number of ways. So thank you so much, God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video.